Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast as I give to you, as I provide you with another 30-minute free consultation if you are so interested. Today's, I guess, subject matter comes from Reddit, r slash career advice. The clock is running on this, so let's find a good one real quick and, and answer Does the corporate ladder still exist? If you're seeing this on video, this is a legit question they're asking. Does the corporate ladder still exist? Good question. Good question. Let's open this up real quick and get to work. We don't have a whole lot to work with, but I mean, I could do a 30-minute video, 30-minute episode on, on whether or not it actually does exist and how to navigate it, but... But we're going to use a little bit of the context that they are providing in order to answer their question thoroughly. My name is Alex. I'm your host for the next 30 minutes. You've got me for free. R slash career guidance. Does the corporate ladder still exist? They say, I'm three years out of college. Count them. One, two, three years out of college. And it seems like the general flow of things we're taught is you get a job and work your way up. I've worked a lot of jobs, both white collar and blue collar. And it seems like nowadays the latter doesn't exist, does not exist, they say. So they claim. Best case from what I've seen has been people getting at most two promotions. A lot of people I've seen do good work, but have been in the same position for one to two years. The promotions seem to be insignificant and the pay raise inconsequential. Most jobs I've been at, they promote working hard and being an ideal employee, but then hire outside for the position. Most of the time, it's a friend of an employee that holds the same title or is above. Uh, Let me just check, be sure that my audio, my microphone isn't acting up hella crazy. Give me just a moment. Uh, Testing, testing. Oh, shit, there it is. Testing, 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 testing. (laughs) A lot of people I've seen do good work, but have been in the same position for one to two years. The promotions seem to be insignificant, insignificant promotions, and the pay raise inconsequential. I bet you it's like a dollar or two dollars, from like a dollar to five dollars, maybe. Most jobs I've been at, they promote working hard and being an ideal employee, but then hire outside for the position. Most of the time, it's a friend of an employee that holds the same title or above, or is above. Is it really worth working and staying at a company if they keep you at the same position? It seems like nowadays, the job you apply for is the job you get. I think that last sentence there is the job you apply for is the job you settle for, the job you end up at, and any job. Any job coming from me, Alex, any job can be a dead-end job. Even a CEO, even the president. If you quit the next day and you aren't president ever again and that's your peak, that was your dead-end job. If you don't do anything after that, if you don't do anything better, that was your fucking job. That was, that was. And the key word is was. The The operative word is was your job. And now you're just a nobody. You peaked. It's like those individuals that peak in high school. I don't know. Maybe they were on on. Maybe they were a, a, a mathlete, right? Maybe they were a jock. Maybe they were really popular, really social, through the best parties. Maybe they were the 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 druggy, the thuggy, the criminal, and had a criminal record. And you know, you know how the meme goes. Maybe they got plenty of bitches. And they peaked in high school. That, that's just where they that's just where their growth, where their development ended. As to corporate, you decide when your development ends. As with anything else in life, as with anything else in life, you decide where growth and development ends. So 
Does the corporate ladder still exist? They answer their own question, but they also discount and diminish it by, by saying that the promotions seem to be insignificant and the pay raise inconsequential. So they acknowledge the corporate ladder exists because promotions exist, pay raises are existent, but then they say that they're insignificant and inconsequential. So therefore, and their conclusion is, the corporate ladder does not exist. But they've lived through it. They've worked in organizations that have them, regardless of what the job title is. I mean, you, you could create a whole bunch of job titles. You finesse your job, not finesse. Yeah, you, 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 could, you could finesse, you could finesse your organization to create a position for you and negotiate your salary for yourself. Does the corporate ladder still exist? It's not necessarily just a ladder. It's a fucking jungle gym. How about that? <laughs> it's a jungle gym. It's a corporate jungle gym. You decide at what point your development and growth stops because if you show up day to day just for the check, from check to check, and aren't doing much else to grow, to learn, to develop skills that are helpful in the corporation. Yeah, I mean, the corporation ain't gonna, if, if you're a good employee, the, the, the corporation itself isn't gonna go out of its way. Leadership, some leadership. I mean, if we're talking about genuine leadership, leadership creates leaders, right? But management, management is just there to manage human resources, to manage its human capital. And if they could manage and maintain you at the same level, at the same level of productivity without having to promote you or give you more money, that's exactly what they're going to do. That's management. Managers are just managing. They aren't leading the corporation per se. They aren't going out of their way, checking in with you, asking you how your experience at the corporation is. Very few few and far in between where managers are actually leaders most managers they, they just give you the the regular you know re review job review every year and shoot you a cost of living increase if that if that a cost of living increase maybe one two three four five seven percent that's difficult to get over over seven percent because that's cost of living and then some. For some, for some people, that's cost of living and then some. But um, yeah, it still exists, obviously, and it's case dependent. It's factually dependent. So if you're having issues climbing your corporate ladder, you have to identify rungs, ladder rungs that you didn't think exist. They might be lateral. They might be diagonal like a jungle gym. Because moving up directly, you, I mean, the, the folks directly above you, more than likely, almost typically, are, are those in a position of seniority because they've been with the organization longer. They, they have priority when it comes to promotions. I mean, if, if we're thinking traditionally, that's how it's been. The older people, the ones who have been the, 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 the elderly, <laughs> the elders, the older vanguard, the ones who've been with the corporation longer than most, they are the ones who are, quote unquote, next in line for a promotion. Why? Because they know the operation. They've been with it long enough. They've, they've managed to cultivate a sense of loyalty with the corporation. Granted, that that sense of loyalty is fleeting. It's, it's fleeting. It's, it's, it's as if it were imaginary. That said, even if the corporation isn't loyal to you, if you've been with it long enough, typically they run out of experienced people to promote if they don't promote you, if you've been with it long enough, right? So the older you... The, the longer you're with the corporation, the higher the likelihood that you will be promoted. 
Now, it makes sense if you are closer towards the bottom, closer to what is usually considered entry level, the promotions might seem insignificant. You might go from uh, a part-time sales associate (laughs) to a full-time sales associate. Is that a promotion? You have to ask yourself, is that really a promotion? And if you're getting caught up on titles, then the promotion and the pay raise should be inconsequential to you until you can work, until you can hustle yourself into a position that is worthwhile. And that's going to come with time. That's going to come with time. That's going to come with time and effort, actually. Let me, let me preface, let, let me further qualify that by saying not just time because, I mean, the longer you're there, yeah, you're going to get seniority, but effort. You have to make yourself known. You have to promote yourself. Because I've, I personally, spe- speaking from experience and having seen it, having witnessed it in others, you can definitely be promoted over others that have seniority. You just have to assert your value as an asset to the corporation. And yet, you will catch flack. Yes, there will be haters because they've been with the corporation long enough, so they have this notion that because they have been there longer than you have, they're deserving. They deserve the next promotion. That's not necessarily true. Again, managers managers will capitalize on what little loyalty they do have and maintain, keep others at the same level that they have been at. If there is no significant change, why would they fuck with the productivity? Why would they fuck with someone else's productivity? If me, Alex, if I'm putting forth my best effort and I've got, you know, I'm not going to say the best ideas because some of the best ideas I keep to myself until I move up. If Alex has a good work ethic, if Alex has good energy, good vibes, comes to work, lights everybody up, hold up, hold up, he, <laughs> hold up, he comes to work and everybody lights up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Comes to work and lights up, lights fools up. No, no, no. Comes to work and everybody, everyone lights up and enjoys working with Alex. Customers enjoy working with him. Alex has found a way to finesse himself into uh, customer reviews. That's easy to do. That's easy to do. That's a whole other episode. I'm not even 30 minutes long. I can explain it now. Especially in service-based, in, the, in a service-based industry, uh, if you could, if you could, you know, level with your customer, build rapport, you know, some confidence, that, be trustworthy to your clients, to your customer, and then ask them to review you with how their experience was, like working with you, allowing you to service them, to give to give them that service, that product that they came in for, whether you're in sales or service, this works, and your name gets dropped, corporate will notice, especially when it comes time for review day. Corporate will notice when you tell them, obviously. Otherwise, corporate is fucking blind. They, they're, they're go-to mode is just management. It's just management. Until innovation is like... Until innovation literally comes and fucks them in the ass. Until, until they have to innovate. They won't change until they have to. So if you are that change and they have to change, you have to recognize, you have to be cognizant of the position that you hold. It's a position of power. It's perceived to most as a position of weakness because a corporate has the money and fucking capitalism is exploitative. Well, well, why don't you up your fucking game and exploit corporate? Come on, man. You got to flip it on them. Is it really worth working? They're asking. Is it really worth working and staying at a company if they keep you in the same? If they keep you at the same position, it seems like nowadays the job you apply for is the job you get. You have options. You have options. There's always a lateral. There's always a diagonal. You can move to another department. You can move to another corporation. Take your title with you. Puff up the resume a little bit. I mean, if that's what you like to do, if you want a job hop, job hop from from employer to employer, but sooner or later, your name will get around. If you're a shit employee, your name will get around. These managers, 
these leaders, these, these, these bosses at the top, they know one another. They know one another. They play golf with one another. It's my theory, and I can't prove it, that the CEO or the president of McDonald's and Burger King actually play golf together and have a nice time, genuinely, and believe that they are providing you know, substantive nutrition, nutritional value to the masses. And then, and then, it could be the rank right below them, the vice president or the vice CEO or whoever runs their operation. It could be those motherfuckers right below them that keeps them in the dark, that keeps the higher-ups in the dark. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy. That's, that's, a whole other, um, that's a whole other episode. If you want, that's season one. Go back to season one, episode two, on what big data looks like, on what big data on, on the power, the power that comes from big data and being able to manipulate it and doctor it. Because the ones at the very, very tippy, tippy, tippy top have no fucking clue what happens. Might not have a clue what happens in their organization. These CEOs at the top might believe that, they're, that they are doing right by the world. And then the, C, the, uh, the vice presidents or the, the division presidents below them are the ones who go out of their way to you know to purchase pink slime from overseas to make beef patties quote unquote beef patties and chicken nuggets and shit with because it's cheaper they are the ones who are cost cutting meanwhile the CEO or president like they just they just see green numbers they just see positive numbers getting kicked up to them by their subordinates and their subordinates are the ones who get the bonuses. Ultimately, you get the, who get the fatter, the juicier bonuses for having squeezed their budget, for having gone out of their way. And to them, that might, to them, they might justify that to be innovation, right? I'm not saying you have to work your way up and be a dirty fucking slime ball, a snake to do it. No, nah, I mean you have to think like a snake. But ultimately, I mean, look at the. Um, Look at the reputation that, that these fast food companies have now. Yeah, it's cheap food, and some eat it out of damn near necessity, but it's well known. It has a reputation of not being good, not being quote unquote nutritious for that reason exactly. So what, what, what words do you see missing from the vocabulary of these, of these companies when they have to do press releases? You're, you're missing the words nutritious. You're missing the words healthy. Yeah, they might have campaigns every now and then introducing salads, but even though salads are drenched in ranch and dressing, <laughs> how healthy could that really be? But no, instead, instead, their go-to is providing affordable meals. Affordable, cheap, easy. I digress. Let's take a look at some of these comments. Some of these comments are saying, some of these, uh, sometimes these comments on, uh, on Reddit might be good, might be bad. They might be trolling. They might be joking. The first one says, I see most promotions when someone above quits. And yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's almost obvious. Someone above you quits. They might have been an, uh, a, a person with seniority. They create a vacuum, and then everybody else underneath them just shuffles upward, shuffles up, if that makes sense. Just moves up one notch after this person leaves. Or, or if the corporation wants to get even more complicated, after that one person leaves, then leadership or management at the top, they have a sort of lottery. They have a sort of competition. Okay, now everyone can throw their names into the hat and then interview for this next position. The interviewing part, I mean, it levels the playing field a little bit. You, you don't have to rely on the fact that you've been with the company longer to believe that you've got that next position secured. So I think, I feel like interviewing for that vacant spot levels the playing field a little bit, but still, even then, uh, having to Having to compete, having to openly compete for something like that opens the door to uh, favoritism. 
and um, opens the door to favoritism, nepotism. Let's collapse that comment real quick. I don't really want to read the replies. That first comment wasn't too substantive. And the next comments after that were probably going to be about, yeah, seniority. Yeah, everybody just fucking moves up. Most of the time, the next comment says, most of the time you will get a 30, sorry, a 20 to 30% increase by moving on to a new company every few years. Early in your career, it'll likely be about two to three years. Mid-career, usually more like five years. And late career, you will likely stay put longer. Of course, that's just a general statement about how most people go about it. Company loyalty is primarily a thing of the past. So when you feel you've learned and grown as much as you can from a role and there is no room for advancement, don't be afraid to move to another company. That being said, many companies do still promote from within. The plus here is you know what you're getting into. Minus is your pay increase won't be as significant as it would be if you went to a new company. Ultimately, do what's best for you and your career. Ultimately, so, so. Let's do what's best for you and your career. Yeah, this comment was really well worded. And uh, yeah, that general statement above about there being a 20 to 30% increase moving to a new company, hell yes. Hell yes. If, if your company doesn't appreciate you because you could go out and get offers, come back to your, uh, to your quote unquote home corporation, your home corporation, and negotiate your, your next pay raise. Negotiate your, your next pay raise. And that's, that's you literally taking like a little, a, a, an isolated market survey, an industry survey of, of your local market, right? And finding what your options are and whether or not your company is doing right by you. And that way, you, you know, you, you turn the screws on, uh, on your corporation to, to fucking wake up. Otherwise, you could jump ship and easily get another 20%, 30%. Now, early in your career, this person is saying, early in your career, it's more likely to be two to three years. In mid-career, usually five years or more. And the longer, the, in, in your later career, you st- typically stay put longer. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. I think that middle paragraph saying that uh, when you feel that you've learned and grown sufficiently, and there is no more room for you to, to grow and learn, and the likelihood of advancement looks bleak, then yeah, I, it's don't be afraid. They're saying here, don't be afraid to move to another company. And I, as I stated it earlier, it could be lateral, it could be diagonal. How you, how you finesse and hustle and, and promote yourself, you promote yourself, if not within your corporation, to another corporation. You take that job title with you and you augment it on your resume. You augment it. Obviously, you don't want to lie about your job title, but you augment those responsibilities. You you really distill what the job title entailed, what your job duties were while you were at the corporation. And in that way, when it comes time to hire, when it comes time to uh, to get, you know, recommendation letters or professional references, You've got something to work with. You, you bring something tangible to the next corporation that you choose to move to, that you choose to interview with. All right, let's collapse that comment one more time. Take a look at the timer here. We're at 23 minutes, so I'll do maybe two or three more before this consultation ends. Oh, man. I clicked out of the, uh, out of the post. They're saying here, it depends where you work and whether you have a leader who believes in you and will vouch for you when it's time for promotions. I got promoted every two years like clockwork at my IT corporate job, or corporate IT job, without having to hop to different companies. Though hopping to different companies works too and often comes with a bigger pay bump than staying at the same company. But good managers are like gold. So it can be worth staying put depending on your situation and preferences. Stress versus pay, in parentheses, they put in here. Keep an open dialogue with your managers, and it should be easy to tell if you're on the path to a potential promotion or if it's time to hop. The corporate ladder used to be straight, but now it's a zigzag. 
they took exa- essentially what I said, applied some personal experience, and uh, boiled it down into three paragraphs, right? This is a very well put together comment. And effectively, yeah, it's, it's, it's you having good relations, both customer facing and inward facing. You want to have good relationships, working relationships with your managers. That way you have a finger on the pulse on whether or not promotions are inbound, whether or not uh, potential uh, st- troubling times, you know, financial troubles are coming down the pipeline. And it might be time to jump then. But yes, good managers are like gold. They're few and far in between. So, you know, hopping from different companies works, but I've, I've also bear witness, borne witness to, um, to individuals who, who were promoted within shitty-ass companies, but because the pay was good, they chose to stay. When they could have earned maybe the same, maybe a little less, and have had way less stress. Maybe even worked closer to home so the commute would have been less the stress would have been less but you know what some people will do for the dollar what some people will do for the paper for the money i'm sure you know they might be regretting it now with the way gas prices are by the way proof of life for this is uh, august 23rd tuesday august 23rd 2022 the way gas prices are like now shit you might as well take that pay cut and work closer from home in some instances than work further away and think you're making more money. But at the end of the day, you're just throwing that shit back in the gas tank, throwing that shit back in the gasoline tank and burning it. (laughs) Next comment here says, no, as in the latter does not exist. Everyone just job hops for a higher salary now. I guess... I guess, but generalizing it as everyone is, you know, it's doing the most. That's doing a lot. That's that's a lot of fucking presumption. That's a lot of assumption that isn't necessarily supported by the facts. A lot of people, the next comment here, a lot of people get stuck in middle management with a handful of direct reports. I felt like I was being vetted for this route and decided to make a horizontal movement to a more relaxed entry level position. I probably make 10 to 20% less, but it's probably half the stress as well. That's exactly what I said. What was it, two minutes ago? They make 10 to 20% less, but the stress is 50% less. They cut their stress by half. Actually, let's read that comment right below it here says here, this only makes sense if you never care about getting to senior management. The negatives of middle management are talked about by those who get stuck there, not those who are passing through. That's true. If if you have your eye on senior management, if you want a leadership position at the very top, more than likely, I want to say it's very much more than likely that you will have to pass through middle management. Uh it's rare, it's exceedingly rare that an entry-level worker hops like leapfrogs over middle management and ends up in senior management. You've got to be a fucking prodigy. And I'm not claiming to be one. I'm not claiming to be one because um, I think, yeah, in, in one position that I, that I held, I was an entry-level employee and I, I almost, I was about to leapfrog. I was putting the pieces together to leapfrog middle management as long as as far to the extent it related to like a storefront. We were still on a storefront. It was a restaurant. I was entry level, getting paid hourly, and I was going to leapfrog, I think one or two positions in between to become the store manager, you know, to just get put on salary. Because I think that's like the beginning of salary and then from there, it, you know, it's, it's the beginning of corporate, entry level corporate after that. You become the area manager or the district manager or some fucking bullshit. Um, but it, it's possible. It's possible. That's a whole other episode. I, I obviously did not become a store manager and, and have that become my dead end job because your boy did it moving. Your boy's a fucking corporate cowboy on some corporate cowboy shit. Somebody else asks, does it get better at senior management? Doesn't the stress compound? <laughs> it wasn't answered, but assuredly I can tell you that 
it does get better. If, if, hmm, premise that. The, the stress is always there. You just become better at coping with it and you become better at mitigating it. And that depends on the type of team you have around you. If you have a bunch of incompetent motherfuckers, incompetent motherfucking fools who don't know, who don't know how to manage, who don't know how to leave, hell yeah, the stress is going to compound because you would be a senior manager and you have junior managers underneath you and middle managers underneath them who don't know what the fuck they're doing, who don't know what the fuck is going on. So you, as a senior manager, then still have to kick up your numbers to your supervisor, to the one who might be above you, who, who, who might be like uh, the president for a division. And, and, and yet you have to deal with the stress of getting the numbers in line, of getting those, those numbers from the ones below you, making sure they are accurate, make sure they are fucking accurate. If not, then it becomes you, the senior manager, who's kept blind and in the dark and being spoon-fed bullshit from the ones below you. And then you bump those numbers up before you know it. You're, you're telling the CEO, before you know it, you're telling the CEO, hey, profits look great. Profits look great. Numbers are great. We're making these numbers. We're meeting our, our, our goals, our objectives, our milestones. We're hitting them all. And before you know it, you're selling pink slime. <laughs> Oh, shit. That concludes the end of this consultation. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, don't hesitate to reach out to us on Instagram. Look for us. Find us, Corporate Cowboys. There's a Patreon page that you can subscribe to. I believe we're in the process of creating a subscribe star page also. But uh, there are multiple tiers on the Patreon page from 1 to 100. So, I mean, and that's... that's an, an, that's in line with the denomination, the US dollar. One, two, five, 10, 20, 50, hundo. So you donate, you keep this operation nonprofit. And uh, I mean, I enjoy making the content for you. If you want something personalized, if you do need a professional consultation, a career consultation, an academic consultation, reach out, reach out. We can set something up for you, uh, an affordable rate of some kind. And, and work with you, work with you to improve, help you at least, point you in the right direction to improve your situation, provide you that guidance, that counseling, that, that public education isn't providing, that uh, corporate for the most part is not providing. So it's, it's up to us. It's up to us to develop one another into consummate professionals and corporate cowboys. Keep doing work, man. I'll catch you next time.